Welcome to The Big Question. I'm your host, Gabriel Bouch. In this next series of videos, we're asking the question, can we actually get reliable information about Jesus Christ from the four canonical Gospels? That is, from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're beginning this series with a man named Papias. Papias was born around 60 AD. Almost everything we know about Papias we learn from the church historian Eusebius, who wrote around 300 AD. Now, we do get a little bit of information from Irenaeus, who wrote around 180 AD, but the bulk of it comes from Eusebius. Papias was the bishop of the church in Hierapolis. Hierapolis is located north of the Mediterranean Sea in what is modern-day Turkey. It's close to the ancient cities of Laodicea and Colossae. Now, Philip the Evangelist, who you can read about in the book of Acts, actually lived the latter part of his life in Hierapolis. And Papias was acquainted with a couple of Philip's daughters. In fact, Eusebius tells us that Papias learned some pretty fascinating stories about what happened in the early church from some of Philip's daughters. But we're not going to focus on that in this video. Now, as far as we know, Papias only had one major work in five books. It was titled Exposition of the Oracles of the Lord. Now, unfortunately, we don't know of any extant copies of this book, but we do have a few quotes preserved for us by Eusebius in his church history. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. I will not hesitate to set down for you, along with my interpretations, everything I carefully learned then from the elders and carefully remembered, guaranteeing their truth. For unlike most people, I did not enjoy those who have a great deal to say, but those who teach the truth. Nor did I enjoy those who recall someone else's commandments, but those who remember the commandments given by the Lord to the faith and proceeding from the truth itself. And if by chance someone who had been a follower of the elders should come my way, I inquired about the words of the elders, what Andrew or Peter said, or Philip or Thomas or James or John or Matthew or any other of the Lord's disciples, and whatever Aristion and the elder John, the Lord's disciples, were saying. For I did not think that information from books would profit me as much as information from a living and abiding voice." This is a fascinating passage at so many levels. Papias was born in the first century. He was an adult in the first century. There were very few degrees of separation between Papias and Jesus himself. Now, what do we learn from this passage? Well, firstly, Papias was clearly interested in the truth. In fact, he uses the word truth three times in this passage. I will not hesitate to set down for you, along with my interpretations, everything I carefully learned then from the elders and carefully remembered, guaranteeing their truth. For unlike most people, I did not enjoy those who have a great deal to say, but those who teach the truth. Nor did I enjoy those who recall someone else's commandments, but those who remember the commandments given by the Lord to the faith and proceeding from the truth itself. Now notice Papias writes about what he carefully learned and carefully remembered from those who had listened to Jesus' own disciples. This is so significant because it shows us that Papias was interested in history. He wanted to know what Jesus actually said and what Jesus actually did during his public ministry. Some people claim that those in the early church did not clearly distinguish between the Jesus of history and what the Spirit was now speaking through the church. And so they think that many times in the church, they would take those revelations and put them back in the mouth of Jesus. And therefore, they draw the conclusion that the Gospels are probably largely fictional. But everything that Papias writes here pushes in the opposite direction. Papias wanted to know what Jesus said during his public ministry. And he learned it from those who spent time with those who had followed Jesus himself. And this suggests that the burden of proof really lies on the shoulders of those who want to argue that the Gospels are primarily fictional. Now, secondly, what Papias writes here implies that those who had learned directly from Jesus were still talking about what they had learned 40 or 50 years after the crucifixion. Now, this is so significant. Many people think that by the time the Gospels were written down, the original message of Jesus was just hopelessly garbled. They think that the way the information was transferred from one person to the next was a lot like the modern-day children's game of telephone. 
Have you ever played this game? Maybe at a birthday party or something, somebody whispers a message in the ear of a child, and then he tries to remember what he heard, and he whispers it in the ear of the next child, and so on. And by the time you get five or six children down the chain, the basic message has been completely lost, and oftentimes what comes out is pretty amusing. Well, this is not what was going on in the early church. In fact, those who personally learned from Jesus were still telling others what they had seen, what they had heard 40 or 50 years later. Somebody didn't have to be at the end of a chain of 100 people long or something. No, that they desired, they could still hear directly from one of Jesus' disciples. Now, again, this is significant because this is going on even after the first gospel, probably Mark, was already written down. We still had living disciples of Jesus proclaiming what they had heard, what they had seen, even after the gospels were being put in written form. Thirdly, and relatedly, Papias' comments demonstrate a clear preference for eyewitness testimony. In fact, Papias writes, For I did not think that information from books would profit me as much as information from a living and abiding voice. Now, men and women in the ancient world often demonstrated a preference for what Papias here calls a living voice. Now, by a living voice, Papias means someone who has personal experience. In fact, other ancient authors actually use this same phrase. Authors like Galen or Seneca or Quintilian or Pliny. They felt that the best way to learn a subject was from somebody who already had personal experience. Ancient historians like Polybius felt that the best case scenario was for a historian to have actually participated in the events he was writing about. But the next best scenario was to interview those who were eyewitnesses. Now, this is what Papias desires. He was pursuing information from eyewitnesses. Now, Papias was not the only early Christian to desire eyewitness testimony. In fact, as we'll discuss in later videos, this was also the case for the gospel writers. Well, if individuals like Papias and other early Christians and the gospel writers wanted eyewitness testimony, then this greatly increases the probability that what we find in the gospels will provide us reliable information about Jesus Christ. If they wanted to get their information from eyewitnesses, then it's going to be much more reliable. Christians like Papias wanted to know the truth about Jesus. They wanted to know what Jesus had done and what he had said. Jesus' own followers were still proclaiming what they had learned from Jesus 40 or 50 years after his crucifixion. And therefore, the eyewitness testimony that Papias and others desired was still accessible when the Gospels were being written down. Now, we're going to get into this in much more detail in the following videos. But if you found this video helpful, will you take a moment to leave a comment or maybe like or subscribe? And I look forward to bringing you more videos in the near future.